some alone time to think? <sighs> All right then, Paimon won't disturb you. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away. Awesome! What is it? Paima wants to know. Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Those spaces remind me of dreams, like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have... <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I've already experienced the Sabzerus Festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. The moon, illusions, and lies. <sighs> what do they all mean? People in Sumeru don't dream. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when she was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now! Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. And it grants knowledge to the people. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? Hmm. The beef is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night, even though we removed our Akasha terminals. <sighs> Those faces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, 
many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. But as soon as that beep sounded, more new... We've already experienced the sub zerus Fest. My mind feels exhausted. Correct. The Akasha is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the sub Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the sub Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. So... This is like a dream factory, and the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay, so that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything. All right, last question. Who am I? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... <laughs> so you noticed. Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you at all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny, thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. You asked me this question before. Now that you know... Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Your notion of reality and... That's why I could only give you very... Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this sub festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier Samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the sub festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, Everyone else has no idea that they are in the sub Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? 
You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with, like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Okay, Nahida said, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. <sighs> Grand Sage said, go celebrate... <sighs> celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean... Saving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? <sighs> Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Now that Paimon remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are... Are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, so what about the other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarzad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarzad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarzad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarzad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she's still... Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't beat 
like that, Nikita. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the sub Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker. It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go. Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. Oh. Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But, yeah... Saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Huh. That's true. Plus, the Sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the whole sub Zeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? You're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub Zeru's festival tradition or something? Okay, okay, my wish, my wish, um, okay, I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, 
you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy Sub-Zerus festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh, oh! You're... What? Fucky? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> <sighs> nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. It seems like everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her. But none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Huh? But Dia can handle them. Hey, Traveler! Oh, it's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. Suit yourself. You're going down. This is order. Both. Dunyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Hyman just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the sub -Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. 
It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay. Uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Wow. Junior Zod wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. <laughs> 